Minecraft has big new developments for both PC and console. And Blaine's personal hero, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, has made his superhero movie decision. Welcome to The Know It All. I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Meg Turney. Since we moved our news updates to The Know, you guys have been asking for a roundup for those who want to know what's going on without needing to check in all the time for individual updates, and here it is. Every Friday, we'll bring you all the news for the past week in a single shot, so when your friend is all like, hey, did you hear about that crazy thing that happened? Your response will always be, obviously, bro. We'll break the news down into video games, movies and TV, and tech and science so you'll get exactly the news you want. Since we're moving pretty quickly, if you want to learn more about a particular story, just click the annotation to visit our full news update, and we'll link out all the full stories at the end of the show. Got it? Good. Let's get started. It's been a big week for Minecraft fans everywhere. Mojang released the long in development 1.8 update for PC. The update brings new ocean monuments to the deep sea, blocks like granite, andesite, and diorite, items like banners and armor stands, mobs like aggressive endermites, monument guardians, and mostly passive bunnies, and a ton of tweaks to enchanting, equipment repair, villager trading, player skins, and even resource packs. But for the console fans, you're not left out of the fun because Minecraft has finally been released for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yay! Last Friday, 4J Studios announced they had finished with the Xbox One version and several days before that had resubmitted the fixed PS4 version to Sony since the initial version they'd sent had a few bugs that needed to be worked out. Tuesday night, Microsoft announced that the Xbox One version would release Friday even though they actually released it a little bit early yesterday, but it seemed like Sony was preparing for a surprise launch on Wednesday. PlayStation France let the cat out of the bag in a tweet confirming a Wednesday release, which was corroborated by Mojang's Daniel Kaplan. Unfortunately, few showstoppers put an end to all that fun. Well, depending on how you count it. By Wednesday evening, gamers in the UK and Australia reported the game was available in their regions, and even though it was probably Thursday there, it wasn't Thursday in the US yet. Time zone magic. Time zone hack. <laughs> Sony later tweeted that US gamers would have to wait until Thursday, but now if that dark time is behind us, and probably nobody's watching this because they're all playing Minecraft. On the odd chance you are, though, there's also news on next gen Grand whoop, Theft. Whoop, we're calling it current gen. The patch decided, and what the patch decrees, I believe, is law. Okay then, <laughs> there's news on current gen Grand Theft Auto 5 release dates. Nothing official from Rockstar, of course, because that would be absurd. But several online retailers have posted dates which were hastily removed once they started circulating. US retailer and BFF to DIY gaming PC builders everywhere, Newegg gave the game a date of November 18th, but there's still some disagreement. A major UK games distributor posted a date of November 14th, the same date given to the game by another UK retailer, Cool Shop, back in July. So either one of these dates is wrong, or the UK may be getting the game four days before the US. You may be lucky ducks. For their part, Rockstar is keeping mum. Following rumors that the PC version was delayed, Rockstar responded with the same ever vague release date of fall 2014. Just gonna say heists. 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 Well, whether it comes out on the 14th or the 18th, 28 new countries will be able to play it on the Xbox One, following Microsoft's announcement of the dates the Xbox One hits new countries this month. We've known since March that the console wouldn't release in any new markets until this month, and it looks like they'll be spread out a bit. The console came out earlier this week in Chile, Colombia, and Japan, and today it finally makes its way to the countries that were part of the 22-country launch lineup before Microsoft axed them last August. Today it's out for Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Saudi Arabia, Slovakia, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates nailed it. It nice will job. be out the 15th in Israel and the 23rd in Hong Kong. India, Korea, Singapore, South Africa, and Taiwan are also getting it, and Russia will bring up the rear. That's a butt joke. On the 26th. In other hardware news, Nintendo has announced two new models of 3DS. Oh, that's awesome. What are they going to be called? New 3DS. Right, that is a new 3DS, but what are they going to be called? No, they're actually called the th new 3DS. The new 3DS will come in two sizes, the same as the 3DS and 3DS XL. They're also really going for nostalgia here because the regular size new 3DS will have buttons colored Super Famicom style, and the new 3DS LL, as the XL is known in Japan, will have GameCube colored ones. If they were really going for a punch in the nostalgia, they should have called it the Super 3DS, but hey, I'm not on the Nintendo marketing team, so Nintendo marketing team, I hope you're writing this down. There will be a ton of changes to the system. The 3D angle range is improved, the screen can automatically change brightness depending on the room's ambient light, there's a tiny new analog C-stick on the right side above the A, B, X, Y buttons, an extra shoulder button on each side, more RAM, micro SD card support, and NFC capabilities in the bottom touchscreen. So far, it's only been announced for Japan, where it will launch on October 11th, and it won't see release here until at least next year. Le boo. But did you see the 3DS is also doing themes? I'm so excited, and so is the PS4. 
Uh, I guess Xbox didn't get the memo though. Wah, wah. Getting away from hardware and back into games, I'd just like to start with the internet was right finally on something. <laughs> Good job, interwebs. Last month we saw the teaser for Team Meets A Voyeur for September, and the internet's called it that the game might actually be Super Meat Boy forever, and it is! The game was shown off at PAX Prime last weekend, and it looks like a doozy. If you've never played Super Meat Boy, it's difficult to have an appreciation for just how brutal and addictive the gameplay can be, so just imagine something like super difficult like Battletoads and super addicting like Tetris. The game, new game will randomly generate landscapes and obstacles every time you die, so you don't get a chance to like practice and then get a do-over, and a new duck feature will let you help, help you fall faster to avoid vicious saw blades and other anti-meat hazards. It's still gonna be super hard. The game will be out next year for phones, tablets, and Steam with six chapters and twice as many bosses as the original game. Bit of bad news, and then we'll finish with happy game news. We're very sorry, stabby type gamers, but Assassin's Creed Unity has been delayed a few weeks. Instead of releasing on October 28th, it will now release on November 11th in North America and November 13th in Europe. So instead of coming out two weeks ahead of Assassin's Creed Rogue, the Templar focus game for gamers on Xbox 360 and PS3, they'll be out the same day. Sadly, that means Rogue is also getting a two-day delay in Europe to hit the 13th instead of the 11th as originally planned. It joins the Gauntlet remake, which was supposed to come out on September 3rd, but will now come out on September 23rd. Incidentally, the Gauntlet was the first news update we did for The Know, so it has a special place in my heart. And the GameCube version was so much fun. There's actually an arcade uh, here in town that has oh. the original Gauntlet, and yet somehow I always end up needing food badly. Ain't that the truth. Cheer up though, you're about to get a new way to play Little Big Planet and join Sackboy in basically being the most adorable thing ever. Run Sackboy Run is a newly announced free to play platform survival game for PS Vita, iOS, and Android devices that basically plays like an endless runner as you dash through tracks, dodging obstacles, and nabbing special bubbles that can be spent on costumes and upgrades, including some for Little Big Planet 3. And it comes out in October, so you won't even notice the extra time Assassin's Creed took to come out. Hooray! Those are the headlines and games this week. If you want to join us for a full hour of game talk, join us on The Patch, our video game podcast where we know more than we realize about Lord of the Rings lore and surprise, Gus is still not a fan of Oculus Rift. Or if esports are more your speed, check out the Know It All leaderboard, our new weekly update taking a look at all the biggest shakeups in professional gaming. Games coming out in the next week include Destiny, NHL 15, MX vs. ATV Supercross, and Dead Rising 3 on PC. To learn more about all the games coming out this month, don't forget to check out Coming Soon by Achievement Hunter. Let's move on to movies and TV. Wee. Ah, actually, it's kind of been light here this week, so we're going to get through this pretty quick. I mean, unless you really want to talk about John Stamos doing that whole reunion thingy. No, not really. No, I agree. All right, let's talk Sailor Moon then, because that's so much more fun. Today, Viz Media is throwing a slumber party live stream for the first four episodes of the new English dub, including one episode called Punishment Awaits, The House of Fortune is the Monster Mansion, which never aired in the original dub in the U.S., so this is the first time we're getting an English pass at it. Unfortunately, the slumber party won't include episodes five or six, which also never aired in the U.S. before, but they will be available when the rest of the new dub episodes start streaming this Sunday at midnight. I really, I don't know too much about Sailor Moon, but I do know about superheroes in tight costumes. So let's talk about Captain America. While this news may not be a huge surprise, it's definitely confirmed now that the Winter Soldier will return for Captain America 3 when that movie comes out in May 2016. Director Joe Russo wants to explore the relationship between the Captain and the Soldier that totally sounds like a musical by the way, or maybe a bad romance novel, but I digress. He says that their relationship wasn't resolved in Captain America the Winter Soldier and there's a lot they can do with it. Figuring out whether Steve Rogers can believe he's redeemable, whether the two will be able to reclaim their friendship, you know, that kind of stuff. Sebastian Stan, who plays the Winter Soldier, has a nine-picture deal with Marvel Studios, so it's safe to see we won't see the last of his character with Captain America 3 either. Good, because I think he's super cute. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping from Marvel to DC, we could soon be finding ourselves with more leading ladies in superhero entertainment with the news that Michael Green is shopping a Supergirl TV series to networks. Green, who worked as a producer and writer on Smallville and Heroes, isn't exactly new to the comic and superhero scene. And given the number of other TV shows like Arrow, The Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Gotham, which Green is also working on, and so on, it could be time for a female superhero to take center stage, especially since that whole Wonder Woman thing never worked out. I think it was the pants. Yeah, it was it's definitely interesting. But enough about heroes, 
we have a new villain to cheer for. Dwayne Johnson, who some people know from wrestling or Fast and Furious or that movie he was in with Mark Wahlberg, but who I know from the Tooth Fairy and no, I will never let that go, has been cast as Shazam's arch nemesis, Black Adam, for an upcoming superhero film. We don't know what film yet. It could be a standalone Shazam movie or an ensemble one a la The Avengers, but don't tell DC I made that comparison, okay? Justice League, I'm sorry. Since The Rock is pretty much already a superhero, it's no surprise that he's in demand, so much so that he has rules as to the roles that he would accept. One, the character has to be emotionally rich, you know, let him show off his acting chops. Two, the character can't have been seen before in a live action film, and three, he has to be a badass. Luckily for all of us and DC, he feels Black Adam ticks all the boxes. He ticks all my boxes. And mine. In our final entertainment news, comedian Joan Rivers passed away yesterday following a vocal cord surgery. She was placed in intensive care after she stopped breathing during the surgery and never recovered. Rivers was controversial for her no-holds-barred approach to humor, but was also a pioneer for women in comedy. She started as a guest host for Johnny Carson in 1965 and got her own syndicated talk show in 1968. Over her 50-plus year career, she also did movies like Spaceballs, performed stand-up, and hosted E's Fashion Police, which was credited with turning red carpet events into their own form of entertainment. She even hosted an online chat show, which you can find right here on YouTube, called In Bed with Joan, which she hosted right up until last week. Well, goodbye, Virgin Alarm. Oh, Spaceballs, I never thought you could make me sad. And that's it for movies and TV, guys. Really, what if we cheer everyone up by talking about Doctor Who for a little bit? Because, you know, our audience loves it when we do that. We could also talk about Sailor Moon some more. Or we could not. <laughs> for, for more TV <laughs> news and discussion, don't forget we have a new podcast called Screenplay, which you can catch up on RoosterTeeth.com, The No on YouTube, or on iTunes. The movie for next week is Face Off, so watch that before the next episode. Now let's move on to tech because there's a lot more of that this week. Meg's right. There was a ton of stuff going on in tech in the last week. The big thing for a lot of people is the fappening because the internet just loves to give events ridiculous names in which several female celebrities had their phones hacked and nude photos stolen and posted online. Some of the celebrities, like Kirsten Dunst and the Digirati in general, were quick to lay the blame at the feet of Apple's iCloud, claiming it had been compromised, and that's how the photos got out. Not so, says Apple. The company released a statement in the wake of the outrage, stating that the victims were subject to targeted attacks in which the thieves guessed their usernames, passwords, and security questions to gain access to the photos, and that the security technology itself wasn't to blame. Basically, it's the old one, two, three, four, five password thing. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five. That's the combination to my luggage. Space balls. Happier space balls. Thank you. It's kind of bad timing for Apple, what with the iPhone 6 announcement coming up and rumors continuing to fly as to its new features. The newest rumor suggests the iPhone will finally include near-field communication, or NFC, capabilities so you can use your phone as a credit card instead. But there are plenty of other rumors going around as well, like that the phone will be even thinner this time around with curved edges. There may be two versions, a smaller one with a 4.7-inch display and a larger one with a 5.5-inch sapphire crystal display with 1 gig of RAM and a faster A8 processor. Apple's iPhone event will take place on September 9th, so we'll let you know all the details in next week's Know It All. Not to be left out though, Samsung has announced not one, but two new versions of the Galaxy Note and a partnership with virtual reality company Oculus. The headline phone is the Galaxy Note 4, which is 5.7 inches long and has an aluminum, aluminum for Gavin's people I think, edge not unlike the iPhone 5S and is only 8.5 millimeters thick. This super amyloid screen totes a quad HD resolution of 2560 by 1440, and the rear-facing camera has been boosted to 16 megapixels. The phone features 3 gigabytes of RAM with 32 gigabytes and 64 gigabyte versions, and support for up to 64 more gigabytes in micro SD storage. The processor will vary by region, but most will house a 2.7 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 805 with a 600 megahertz Adreno 420 GPU. Most importantly, it'll be available in four colors and will be out next month. The Note 4 also won't just be a phone, it'll also be a VR screen thanks to a new partnership between Samsung and Oculus. The Gear VR will work exclusively with the Galaxy Note 4 as a virtual reality headset. The headset will utilize the phone's battery and processing power so you can VR hands-free, and the battery is supposed to last as long as a feature-length movie. It will ship before the end of the year with a 16GB micro SD card preloaded with Gear-compatible content like Tony Stark's lab from Avengers Age of Ultron. The other new phone is the Galaxy Note Edge, which is set apart largely by a curved display around the, wait for it, edge of the right side of the phone. The Edge display will show current weather, time, and other information that the user can swipe through. Otherwise, it's pretty close to the Note 4. 
the same screen and rear-facing camera, but it's a little bit shorter, 5.6 inches rather than 5.7, maybe a little insecure. There's no exact date for it yet, but it will be out before the end of the year. That's it for the know-it-all this week, but we'd like to take a moment to congratulate the Ruby team who are hard at work finishing up Volume 2 because last night Ruby won two Streamy Awards, Best Animated Show and Best Original Score. Yay! Go Team Ruby! <laughs> Rooster Teeth is also up for Show of the Year and you can help us nab it by clicking the link below and voting right up until the award is announced this Sunday. If you want to get news about video games, movies, TV, tech, and the occasional crazy scientific breakthrough, make sure you visit The Know where we live the rest of the week. Otherwise, we'll be back with another shot of The Know-It-All next week, same bad time, the same bad place. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. I'm so glad you did that. <laughs>